today's maintenance day for the Honda Ridgeline. Uh, so for those who don't know, I have a 2017 Honda Ridgeline Black Edition here. This is a car that I picked up in 2018. I uh, was roughly about 5,000 miles. I picked this up while we were on vacation in North Carolina in the Charlotte area. Uh, this vehicle uh, is was a fully spec'd out, I believe, vehicle. Um, I'm not aware of anything that it didn't come with that would have come um, as a, an accessory add-on. So it does have. I do have running boards for it. I have the tonneau cover. I never run the uh, running boards, and I never run the um, <clears throat> tonneau cover unless it's in the winter time. So this car here is the workhorse of our stable, if you will, in our household. So it doesn't really get a lot of love. If you think about it, this car is a truck, and I know a lot of people debate whether it's a real truck or not, um, but I think that this for us is about as trucky as we would want to get. Um, for example, I just took this vehicle out to uh, take the trash to the dump, and in uh, this year's cycle of events, we've also used this truck to carry um, numerous loads of, of rubble to the um, the trash uh, and recycling place um, as we did home improvement projects. So it definitely gets its fair share of use. Um, I've actually gone over the gross weight on this vehicle many times, which is a little debatable and unsafe, I know, but this truck has actually served us well um, in a truck capacity. So if you think about it from that lens, we don't traditionally give trucks a lot of love. And likewise, I spend more time focusing on the CL and the RDX. So today we're going to focus a little bit on the Ridgeline. The Ridgeline has an A13 service code indicator. It's got a roughly just shy of uh, 42,000 miles on it. So pretty low mileage for a 2017 model, um, but still the same um, in the Northeast. It takes a lot of toll on cars and so we need to maintain them. And we're going to do a little maintenance on that today. So the A is an oil change. The one is a tire rotation, which we will not do today because I it's traditionally do that when we swap the tires out during the change of seasons. Um, and the three is a transmission fluid change, but I also like to do a differential fluid change with the A13 um, because of the area that we live in. We use four wheel drive a little bit more frequently or all wheel drive more frequently. Um, and so the differential fluid should be changed kind of regularly in that setting. Now this car is pretty dirty. Um, I don't show it a lot of love, like I said, and likewise it kind of reflects here. Um, you can see it's kind of, you know, dirty, it's got um, <clears throat> kind of uh, blemishes uh, uh, along its sides. So we don't, um, we're not going to address anything with the wash and wax today because that's pretty, um, pretty uh, normal. Uh, we do that just kind of in a cycle pattern with the cars. Um, but we will kind of address the interior, the interior is kind of looking trucky. Um, it's got a lot of dirt in it, it's got a lot of, um, you know, uh, issues from just being a truck um, on the interior. So we're going to take a look at that. Um, but, so let's get started on the, um, the oil change. I know um, some people think that it's hard to do an oil change on this vehicle, but I'll show how it can be pretty easy. Um, and then the transmission fluid change I've never done on this vehicle, so it'll be kind of a, a learning experience for me. I have done the diff fluid um, before, and so let's go ahead and get started on all that. So you really just want to start with uh, turning the wheels to one side, um, and specifically turning the wheel to uh, clockwise rotation so that the wheels are pointing towards uh, the right, and that will allow easy access for the oil filter. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Um, we'll start it up and turn the wheel. And then pop the hood so we make it easier for us to do the oil change. A little tip, not a lot of people know this, but you can go all the way up. So uh, let's go ahead and bring you guys in so we can see what's going on here. <clears throat> okay, so here is the, uh, the engine. It is a J-Series engine. So for, for those who are familiar with Hondas will know that they've been using J-Series engines almost 
since uh, geez, I'm, we're going back to TL times and CL times there. Um, and here I do have an AEM intake on here. Gives us great throttle noise. I'm not big on modifications, but um, with, with a truck, I wanted it to sound a little bit more like a truck, um, which the Ridgeline doesn't do a great job of sounding like a truck. <clears throat> so if you can see right here, this is where the oil filter is. It is right there. And a lot of people say that it's hard to get to, but if you just go through this way, um, you can easily access that oil filter. You actually don't even have to jack the car up, uh, funny enough, to really do an oil change. So let's go ahead and get set up for that. So at this point, we have the car on jack stands, and we're able to access um, every, everywhere except for the rear dip, obviously. Um, we'll be able to access with this setup. Now, I will say... Um, that I traditionally don't put the car on jack stands when I'm doing just an oil change, but because we're doing a transmission fluid change and we have to access um, behind this panel, I believe, to get to the filter, um, we'll go ahead and uh, put it on jack stands for this. Uh, to get the oil started, just like the RDX video, it's a traditional uh, 17 mil Honda or 17 mil wrench to get the oil plug off. That's pretty typical for Hondas. Uh, so I won't show that, we'll just get going on that. Here's our drain plug. And with your drain plug, you should get your crush washer. Always replace your crush washer, people. That's how you strip your oil pan if you don't. There we go. Now what's interesting about Honda's service interval, I know the engineers have really done their math, I'm sure, on this, but the engine oil looks very dark um, whenever I wait until the full uh, interval change. So it's always been interesting to me, um, is that okay, or should you change the oil more frequently based on the color of it? Um, but Honda engineers have programmed it in such a way that I guess they know. Um, so, transmission fluid change is is pretty simple. Um, here's your drain plug right here for your transmission fluid to drain out. Always make sure that you you know how to get your fluid back in before you hit the drain. Now, on oil, that's pretty basic, but transmission could be a little different. Um, and in this case, we're going to see. Um, how we're going to refill it before we actually go ahead and pull that drain plug and we're also going to identify where that filter is. Um, I believe the filter is located somewhere over in this region. I believe it might actually be right there on that bracket so we'll see how, how we gain access to that. Okay so for the transmission it looks like we have a dipstick right there, traditional Honda dipstick. Um, that we can reach located right there. So that will in that will obviously serve uh, two purposes one to check the level But we can also use that to refill our transmission once we drain it So we'll just wait for the We'll go ahead and remove some panels in the meantime and go ahead and get ready to access that transmission filter And as you can see the fluids draining out at the bottom right there. Uh, looks pretty normal, I would say, and pretty clear, pretty um, consistent in um, viscosity, you know, chunks. Same thing with the transmission, you have a magnet um, plug, and so normal fragments are on there. Um, no, nothing to be alarmed though, seems like it's doing well. It's got the uh, transmission drain plug removed, uh, which is basically just a 3 8 uh, ended wrench at the end right here to remove it. Um, it is magnetized, so you get metal fragments from the transmission. This is normal. Um, what I would say is not normal is if you saw a huge chunk at the end of it. But this is just basically fine particles that are captured by the magnet, um, especially if this is your first one. There's that break-in um, period with the, with the original fluid, and it's going to create a lot of particles. So your first one's always going to be uh, a little bit more in volume of metal fragments than say subsequent ones thereafter. But basically you just take the rag, 
clean rag and then just wipe it off and then you can reinstall it. The filter is a uh, 25430-PLR-003 um, and I'll show you what that looks like here. So this is what the filter looks like. Pretty basic, it just has a filter element in there and that's just to help catch any fragments from ruining your, your transmission um, fluid. And basically that's just designed to pick up larger fragments that this is not picking up, filter them out so that it doesn't ruin your transmission. This also will protect some of the transmission coolers on the black edition. There is an extra transmission um, cooler on it. Um, the base models though don't have this. You can also add it on as an accessory add-on, I believe. Um, but this is, uh, I believe, on every model. Um, so this is a standardized part for you if you have a ridge line. Basically, the hose just goes on both sides and it attaches and you can change it out. Uh, no more difficult than, say, doing the oil filter. And if you're curious about what oil filter part number it is, 15400-PLM AO2. Okay, so we were able to get the old filter out, uh, a little bit of mess, and now we have the new filter that's gonna go in. Um, so it would sit like this with the bottom ridge down, and then you just connect the hoses and then put the spring clamps back in. So, so nothing really too complicated, I would say there. Uh, then clean up the mess, refill the transmission with fluid, um, which, if you're curious what fluid to use, please only use ATF DW1 for automatic transmissions. Uh, this is specifically formulated for Honda transmissions. Uh, I know people who have tried other transmission fluids and it doesn't end up working out most cases scenario. So I would recommend just sticking with the OEM, which we will do on this vehicle as well as the differential. So those two we don't mess around with. And now we just have to go ahead and get back under the car and reconnect our filter up into this location in this orientation with the ridge down and then the two hoses go on the bottom like I said. I wanted to make sure I captured this for you guys. So the top hose you can actually pull out um, and attach one side without even being into the car. Um, which would make installation and did make installation quite easy for the top part So you can put the clamp all together and then it'll bend back up into there So quick note on that and then the bottom obviously you'll have to do up into the car because it holds it in place And then your bracket will go back over it Another quick note is this setup seemed to work best for me to get the bolt back into the bracket for the transmission filter So this is a deep 10 with a swivel and a long extension on it going to a 38 ratchet. Um, I felt like this was the best way to get the correct angle because uh, you have to work at it kind of at like this angle. Um, and so this, this setup was really the easiest way to do it. Okay, so one of the last things we need to do to finish up this job is go ahead and place fluid both back into the crankcase and into the transmission. Uh, so for the engine, it's going to be 5.7 quarts, and for the transmission, it will be 3.3 quarts. Um, obviously, you need to buy four for four quarts for the transmission and then six quarts for the engine. Um, and at that point, it's pretty easy. Um, basically, the oil speaks for itself. You know, if you can't figure that out, then uh, you probably shouldn't be doing the job. And then the transmission is basically pulled. It, we're going to pull some dipstick. We're going to put a transmission-specific funnel down in there that um, has a very tapered end that will fit into the, the fill hole um, and that's how we'll go ahead and uh, perform that refill. So let's go ahead and do a time lapse on that and uh, get going. <laughs>
the differential fluid that you're going to be using is called dual pump 2 from Honda. You really don't want to use any other differential fluid in a Honda product. Um, so it's pretty simple, two quarts of dual pump 2. You have two crush washers that you're going to be replacing. You'll likely want to have hand pump, something similar to this, um, so that you can extend the hose into the differential case and then pump the fluid in. There's uh, not really too many ways that you can do it, squeezing it from the bottle, um, so this comes in handy. Um, I'll show the two plugs, but you always want to make sure that you can refill it first. So remove the fill plug and then drain the fluid. Um, it's a 3 8 ratchet on the, the, um, on the um, drain plug and it's a 3 8 ratchet on the fill plug. Um, so just make sure that you can loosen that fill plug before you go ahead and dump all the fluid out and avoid having to tow your car to a dealership or to a mechanic um, if you're unable to figure it out. Other than that, I'll show you the setup. Um, I'll show you the drain process and the refill process, but it's pretty straightforward. On the Honda Ridgeline, you can see here through the uh, differential plate and mounting um, bushings on either side that this is the fill plug, that's 3 8 and then if you look down here you will also see a very similar 3 8 right there on the bottom side, so that is your drain. I went ahead and cracked the refill already, so I know that this is loose. Um, usually it takes a lot of effort to get it off, but then um, once you you can spin it by hand after that, and it makes it really easy. Uh, so let me see if I can get a, a better light here for you. There you go. And then you can just, once you crack it, it will spin by hand. So you can see I have my dual pump quartz. I have my pump all set up. If you're using this specific pump, you can see it's labeled in and out. Zoom in there for you a little bit. Yep, so in and out. Uh, obviously, you're going to put your your hose for the in into the dual pump quartz, and then the out goes into the transfer case, um, or I'm sorry, differential. So I have a little pan under here still, because uh, you're going to fill it up until the point where it starts coming out, and so we want to catch that and not let it flow over the floor. Um, but it's pretty basic at that point. You're just going to put the hoses in respective ends and pump it in. Now there's really not too much to see, so I'm not going to film that but you kind of get the point at this junction. It's uh, a very simple job. So you can see here the uh, notice for service. It's a A13. Let me go ahead and scroll through here. There we are. We have 10% oil left. We have an A13 service notification. And so how do we go ahead and reset that now uh, that we've done all the required maintenance? of what the actual um, change is. So engine oil, tire rotation, and transmission. I went ahead and did the differential, as I said, but all have been performed, so we'll go ahead and hit the uh, reset button. Are you sure you would like to? Yes, let's go ahead and reset that. And now we are showing over here 100%, and that's kind of what we were looking for.
And so that concludes the uh, A13 service on the Honda Ridgeline. Now we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and start the engine up. We'll shift it through the gears, um, check the fluid level, make sure that it's at the correct, top it off if need be. Um, kind of shifting it through the gears allows the torque converter to uh, fill up. Now um, I'm assuming this is a torque converter style transmission since it's not like a dual clutch or any of anything like that. So assuming that's accurate, then um, the torque converter will fill up and then you just check the fluids pop it off as necessary for the transmission as a differential. It's just a drain and refill, like I've said. Engine kind of the same way, check the fluids. Um, so those are the two things, and that concludes uh, the 2017 Honda Ridgeline A13 service.